Welcome back. Coach, you want to say hello to anybody? Uh, the camera's up there. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> He's just going to cover it all. You forget no one when you say hello, everyone. That's right. Yeah. I'm Ron Yance along with Eric Schmall. Eric is the head track and field coach here at Case Western Reserve University. Eric, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Happy to be here. You had an indoor meet yesterday. Thank goodness it was indoor. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. You're considering the weather that we're having right now in January in northeastern Ohio, how'd it go? It was good. It was good. It was. Uh, we, we actually we left a little bit earlier because we saw the weather coming. It was a good thing because we, we got there. We were a little rushed, and I think for first meet travel, you know, getting getting to the venue and getting the kids acclimated to travel competition, they handled it incredibly well. They were all composed. They kept it a schedule, did everything right. Um, and we had several really nice performances. They're all under load right now. They're training really hard, lifting really hard. So it's it's something where we know everybody wants to see the number now. Everyone wants to be able to say, like, yes, every, this is going well. But they have to remember that's a process. It takes quite a few months to build it up and to taper it off and to peak. So being patient, they're doing a good job with that for sure. Well, that kind of leads into my question about how it, how do you, as the leader of that program, approach an indoor season? Is it, you know, you talked about the load. It's a process. Everybody wants a time now or a number. So do you look at the indoor as like a spring training for the spring? Or do you, how do you approach indoor season? Personally, I always have. Um, I think the whole point of indoor track was northern states were under snow, and so the Southern states had an advantage, so they started building indoor tracks in the, in the 50s and 60s, and then it became an NCAA championship sport, and it had its own, it became its own monster, and I think that if you really want your team to peak at the ultimate showing of, of, your, of your ability, you know, outdoor track, you got four throws, you got four jumps, you got, you know, pretty much equivalent sprint and distance opportunities on the track. So a complete team is going to show its, its greatness at an outdoor championship. And I've always tried to preach that, that you don't want to be the school, that, oh, that's a distance school, or, oh, that's a sprint school. You want to be a balanced team. And so I think indoor is, is something I've always seen as preparatory. It's, you know, it's a time of year to get under heavy load and focus on, all right, it's a process. Get to the outdoor season, and then we start really thinking about peaking, getting our big success marks, things like that. You mentioned the throw, and you mentioned being balanced, and we want to bring up a young lady, Cassandra Laos. Sure, yeah. Who was a national champion, correct? Yes, absolutely, and, and, and very special young lady, somebody who I think, you know, exemplifies everything that we want to see in our student athletes, very committed, very time managed. You know, she, she left no stone unturned in her pursuit of her absolute best, and I think that's why she became a national champion. There wasn't a single thing that she had missing from her from her resume when it came to approaching that meet. She had done everything she had to do. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention her coach, Rocco Matulo. He's He's been just incredible. He's perfect coach for the perfect athlete in that situation. I mean, they went through so much together to get to that point. And uh, I think that speaks to how important that, that, that relationship is. You gotta trust, trust your coach, trust the process, all that. So for those out there that aren't familiar with the hammer throw, mm. describe it to the novice. So basically, in the case of the of the women's hammer throw, Cassandra's it's a four specialty. kilometer, or sorry, four kilometer, four kilogram uh, steel ball on the end of about a 38 inch wire with a handle on it. So think about it like pitching a golf club with an eight pound head, spinning around in a circle four times and releasing it, and it going, you know, anywhere from 150 to 200 feet. She was the best in the country at doing that. I always use the golf analogy to help people because not many people know track. So it's like, well, yeah, just imagine being out on the on the course and pitching your golf club. Eric, do you know, uh, not that I've never thrown a golf club, so I wouldn't know. I'm no, sure you yeah, haven't. Um, but <laughs> Eric, do you know how many national championships you've had here, at national champions, individual champions in track and field? Oh, gosh, off the top of my head, I think a half dozen. Yeah, not many, half dozen. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, six, it's, a, it's a pretty rare feat, and, yeah. and it was. It's a big deal. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And in her case, it was so special, and I think that it, it's a story that we, we joke about. She was an obsessive person when it came to Disney. She loved singing Disney songs and whatnot throughout her. her when she'd get anxious, she'd start singing Disney songs, and her story is very Disney. You know, she, she came here as a swimmer, kind of talked her into coming out and throwing, and then her her true senior year, she was having a national class year. She was ranked top five indoor in both the weight and the hand, or in the shot. And she got injured, broke her ankle, and her season was done. And she could have walked away, but she came back, rehabbed, you know, got through the trauma of, of, of falling in a circle and breaking a bone. And at the end of it, she got the thing. Yep. I mean, she went all the way to the thing that she had wanted the most. She came back and said, I'm coming back to win a national title. And she did that. I think that's such a beautiful story and a great lesson to everybody who paid attention to it that 
you know, it takes incredible discipline and sacrifice if you if you're if you're being authentic about the goal that you set for yourself at the beginning of the year. So, when you look forward to this spring, with uh, the the outdoor season starting, are there some names that you know Spartan fans should look for? Absolutely. I think uh, on the women's side, I think that. You know, we're very young. I think we've got a lot of girls in the freshman group that are going to be very talented. Um, in terms of leadership, you know, Bailey Flint, Sam Kelts, we've got good seniors in the jumps. Um, Mia Vargo, who's a freshman jumper, she's going to be real good in the high jump for sure. And I, I hope to get her to be good in all the jumps. I think she's an athlete enough that she can really do do it all if she wants to. Um, and then Taylor Jackson in the throws, I think she's, she's going to have a great year for us. And uh, Julie Hines, Julie Hines is somebody who, as a junior, you know, last year as a sophomore, she really gained the confidence to understand that she had the ability to compete at the UAA level. And so we're looking forward to seeing how that how that plays out this year, kind of advancing from the confidence build to, all right, now I know I can do it. Uh, men's side, uh, obviously Dominic Otto and, and Trey Razanaskis, you know, having two guys who went to national meets, two national meets, indoor and outdoor last year, you know, coming in, there's confidence. There's a sense of I know what I need to do to get back to that level. And, and also two guys who are completely sold out for the conference meet. When they go to the outdoor meet, they're not going there and saying, boy, I hope I win something. They go there and say, no, I'm here to collect points. I'm here right. to get 25, 30 points for our program. And that's something that's really important in our philosophy of how we how we go into that championship. I'd also say Brian Holden in the throws. You know, last year he was the javelin champion in the conference and uh, came to us always saying, I'm a javelin thrower, I'm a javelin thrower. And Rocco and I would be like, OK, you know, you never marry your first love. and so. He became a really good hammer thrower, and now he's picking up the shot. And so we anticipate him being a real heavy scorer in, in, in at least three of the four throws for us outdoors. So in a, in a depth in the mid-distance now is really good, too. And our sprinting depth is really good. And Juan Perez, who's a sophomore yesterday, ran, I want to say, the third, third or fourth fastest 60-meter time in our program's history. And so it's exciting. It's yeah. a lot of it's a lot of, of blend between good experience and leadership and a lot of youth that, that just needs to get through some tough races to, to get to that level too. Depth and balance yeah. seem very key and it seems like you have it. I mean, because when you mentioned points, it's about getting oh, points. Yeah. If, if, if you can score points, you don't have to win it, but if you can score points, the individual race or the individual oh, yeah. throw and enough points get totaled for your team, then the team wins. Oh yeah. It's, it's a good good situation. Absolutely. And that's, that's something that I think too, you know, we know that in our conference, if you win our conference, you're typically going to be an All-American in almost any event you do. And so we love when we have guys that finish all UA and are top three in the league. But I think we've made our bones over the years nibbling away at that four, five, six spot. People don't even realize, because if you don't see the kids on the boxes wearing the Case Western Reserve, it's like a sneak attack. They're like, wait, they're they're still they're still in it, you know what I mean? Because it's all the attention is driven to the top of the boxes. But um, a lot of depth, and I think that that experience as it comes is going to be a big thing. Well, good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Been a pleasure. It's it's been nice having you. Stop by any time. All right. Thanks, Ron. Finish off the indoor seasons by staying warm and dry. We'll try. <laughs> and then stay warm and dry when you head outside in the spring because track in the spring in northeastern Ohio is not for the faint of heart. Bring your it? umbrella yep. and yep. your mittens. And your mittens. All yeah. right. Eric Schmall, thank you very much. You bet. Thank you. We'll be back with second half outlook right after this.